Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Terry. We are full-time treasure hunters and resellers. We work hard. And we play hard. We travel the Northwest buying storage units as well as scouring the United States for liquidation merchandise. Our 20 years of experience has created a passion for reselling and has allowed us to spend time with our family and enjoy recreational and travel around the world. We believe laughter is the medicine of life and we are here to share it with you. Please join us on this journey and keep laughing with Mike and Terry's Retail. Hey guys, Mike and Terry here with you again today. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we kind of wanted to put together some type of a video with some information on how to get started reselling. We've actually been getting some messages and some people just asking us basic questions on how do you do this how do you do that yes um we've never trained anybody to do this before so we don't really know what to do but we just wanted to pass some of our knowledge on to you guys just some basic initial steps on you know at just the very beginning of it just how to get started we've been uh reselling for 20 plus years yeah, over 20 years so that's that's a lot of experience we've <laughs> we've We've seen a lot, we've done a lot, and uh, I think we've... we've. It's been a crazy ride. It has been a crazy ride. We have, it's not over yet. No, it's not. We have, <laughs> we'll call it flipping. We have flipped everything from your basic little item to everything. everything. I mean, we, we yeah, we've, we've done the... The garage sale picking, the storage locker picking, the, we have gone to auto auctions, we've flipped boats and RVs, we have even flipped houses. We've done it all. Uh, liquidation, the pallets, we've, we've done it all. We've had antique stores, we've had regular secondhand stores, we've... We've done it all. <laughs> we've done it all and we've, we're not done yet. We're not so. done yet. We have weathered a lot of storms, we have seen a lot of storms, we have seen economy crashes. You know what? It is an interesting ride, but we are here to tell you, in our opinion, yep. our advice, how to get started. Okay. Well, I guess there it is. How I'm, to get started. I'm going to let Mike start um, it. <laughs> you know, as Terry said, we've done just about everything there is, and, and kind of the sky's the limit in this business. It is. Um, it's what you're going to get out of it is really based on what you put into it. So <laughs> maybe you just want to be... A little part-time reseller you want a little extra money in your pocket for the weekend so you can have fun who knows what it is but um, you know for us the way we started uh, I feel based off our experience the first thing that I could tell you guys is you've got to decide where you're going to sell are you gonna sell on eBay are you gonna sell on Facebook marketplace local are you going to sell Mercari? Are you going to go try to go way to the top clear to Amazon? Who knows what that's going to be. But you've got to decide where you're going to sell those products. And Correct. And where you are comfortable selling at your level of selling. Correct. Exactly there. And I think that and the next thing after that is decide what you want to sell. There's a million things, billions of things in this world most people, when they start out reselling, they instantly go to something they already know. Yes. Maybe you're a video gamer, so you know a lot about video games. Um, so you're going to hopefully be drawn towards selling those types of products because you already know them. You know what they are. You know how they work. You'll know if, if, you know if they're complete, and you'll know the value of them. You know, I'll give them a quick little rundown, um, just a quick little a little story here for you guys, just how we kind of, I, this is how I feel how we kind of got into it, is um, we had the, Mike was at work, kind of a job, and I went garage selling with um, some family, and I saw this, this item, a cast iron skillet, I knew nothing about, nothing at all. And it was on the ground. It had like $3 on it. But it just kept calling at me. I don't know what it was. But I know nothing about this stuff. I was like, it's 3 bucks. Whatever. I'll take it. I'll give it to Mike. He could take it to camp. What, whatever. I don't know. 
We had it in our garage. The next weekend we were having our own garage sale and people kept seeing it. Are you selling that? Are you selling? No, no, no. We would not sell it. They started bidding on it at our garage sale, like three different people. And it got up to $35. And I was just like, you can have it for $35, you know? That's 11 times your money. That thrill we felt inside us, that excitement was just like, wow, I only gave $3 a week ago and I just got $35 now? That $3 just sat in my wallet regardless yeah. all week. It was, you know, that's nothing. That excitement you felt, you feel it inside you. It was amazing. And that triggered Mike and I. So that, that gives you an idea, you know, just that a feeling you get. I had done some reselling before that, but that was like, that was the beginning of, yeah. let's go for it. Let's, let's, let's go find this. stuff, specifically that find things fun. just to make money. That was, that was a fun feeling. Yeah. <laughs> it was, a, it was exciting. You know, if any of you have ever gone to um, a casino or whatever, a horse race or bingo, anything, or you do a raffle, that exciting feeling almost of winning something or of an achievement. Uh, you know, maybe you were trying something and you achieved it and you just had that excitement in you. It, it's an exciting feeling. Like a major award. A major award. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so, so go on. So anyway. Um... <laughs> A major so, reward. <laughs> like I said, you know, pick items and pick products that you're comfortable with. Things that you know. Yes. Do you um, want to go on to the yeah, next one? I will. Try picking uh, items from your own home to get started. Before you put money out there. If you don't want to put money out there, because if you don't make it, you didn't lose your money, right? So, pick some stuff from your house. Everybody has stuff in their house you that do. they don't need. Um, and you may be surprised on what things might be worth. It's Exactly. If it's not worth a lot of money, just try it on Marketplace. You don't want it. I don't want to deal with a garage sale. Instead of just taking it off to donation, try your local area. However it be. Try your Facebook. Try your Craigslist. Try your newspaper. However your, your community, your town, your city... How, whatever is best in that area, there's a multiple of ways there. Try locally first, so it doesn't cost you anything to try it. Definitely. See how you like putting time into it. You know, was it worth it to put in 20 minutes to make this for, you know, $25? Do you like dealing with messages? Do you like dealing with people? Um, all those are, are factors on maybe it help is. you decide where you want to sell at. Some people don't, they don't like to deal with people. So they don't want to sell in their local market. They only want to sell on the internet, like eBay or somewhere like that. So they sure. don't have to deal with people. Um, that's your choice. Exactly. And everybody, you know, everybody does it differently. Exactly. And then if it's going on to the internet, to being shipped out somewhere, be prepared. Do you know how to ship. Can you figure out how to ship? Do you have the shipping supplies? Where am I going to go get the shipping supplies if I don't have it? Know your game plan. you got to put your game plan into place. Um, just try. You have to have, you a, have to have a game plan. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting there going, uh-oh, what do I do now? You know, if it's selling locally, are you meeting them at your house? Are you meeting them at a store? Where is the trans transaction going to take place at? Feel comfortable with it. You have to feel comfortable with what you're doing, especially when you're starting. Definitely. Um, another thing is no realistic resale prices. You guys, I cannot stress <laughs> this anymore. This is no. probably the number one mistake made by people learning to resale is they don't know realistic prices. No Everything in the world has a value, but you have to know the right value. You can't go out and pick merchandise to sell if you don't have some kind of an idea of what it's worth. Um, you know, you may go out in the world and you see this bottle of water for, you know, 10 bucks. I'll sell it. And you think, 
<laughs> oh, I'm going to buy that because that's worth a hundred. But in all reality, it might have only been worth eight. So you've got to know what it's worth. I, I mean, I really feel like, you know, in our years yeah. of retail, that that is the number one rule is and know the value. Know the value. And then also remember, just because what you see a value of in your local area does not mean that's what it's going to be somewhere else. So if you're going to go online with it, check the online prices. eBay. Everybody likes to go look at prices on eBay. Um, and eBay is an awesome, awesome tool for resellers. But you must look at the sold prices. Look at that item yes. in the sold section. Be you don't base it on what other people have it listed for no. because that's not realistic. Because I can have my water bottle posted for three ninety nine, and Mike could come along and put the same exact water bottle up there for a hundred and ninety nine. Well, that's because mine's bigger. Look at that. That's like. <laughs> It's like a, uh, a parent and a child size yes, thing. Yes, I, I got the, the big daddy box. But, <laughs> but anyway, yes, you really have to know your prices. And use that eBay. Use the sold section on eBay a for a price tool. comparison tool. It's, it is, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a free tool. Use it. Definitely. Use it. And again, feel comfortable. You need to feel comfortable with how far you're putting yourself out there. Because you put yourself out there this far... Once you get comfortable, you go this far. A little bit more, a little and bit more. Don't and you go will grow with it. From here to here. Because you're gonna it's like jumping into the deep end of the pool and not knowing how to swim. There you are. Not gonna work. So you gotta take your steps. Take your steps. Feel comfortable. Okay. Uh let me see. Your realistic prices. Sorry, we're looking at notes. We here made some notes. We wanted to if we're if we're, we're teaching, not we're not instructors. No. So <laughs> we're trying to figure out how to get this information to you guys. If we could put teach it into you a video. in person, would be so much easier. We would turn you into the champion reseller <laughs> if we could do it face to face. Uh, so after you have picked through your house, you know where you're going to sell the items. You're feeling a little more comfortable. Now you what, understand the process. You, exactly. you know how it works. Now, what you sold from your house, here's the, here's the question. Did you spend that money or did you save that money and use that money to buy more stuff? Our opinion is you should have saved that money because that's kind of free money in a way and turn it in to stuff you could go pick. The resale business is all about cash flow. If you don't have cash flow, you're, you're not going to make it. So no. you've got to have the money to buy more merchandise. So yes. you, you just start out small. Maybe you buy a $2 item and you sell it for 10 bucks. Take that $2 back. Go buy another $2 item. Maybe you spend the 8 bucks. Maybe you reinvest the whole 10 and you buy a $10 item and sell that for 50 But you keep growing it until it keeps going up and up and up. And yes. eventually you get to the point where... That little bit of money you started with is going to be bigger. You'll have more capital to work with. You can start selling bigger items. And you might think that $10 item, oh, that's only 10 bucks. You took $2 and turned it into 10 I mean, that's five times your money. That's, that's huge profit margin. Even though it's a little bit of money, it's a huge profit margin. In the way that we all, you know, even, even as far as we've gone with this, we still look at it as a $2 item and say, I only turned it into five. So I only made $3. I'm cool there. $3 in three minutes. That was, as, as, as funny as this is going to sound, that's like a free gallon of milk you just got. I mean, it, it really, it's, now you just do that a hundred times in a day. Notice or that she looked at it at a grocery in a standpoint. Week. That's a woman right so, there. <laughs> She looks like, well, hey, I got a gallon of milk. It's, I didn't it's pay however for that. you want to look at it. But it really you know, is. to try really to is. to try to point it out into a material item, you you know, you should turn around and right. put it back in. But that's your choice because then before you know it, you went from two dollars to ten to fifty to now that's two hundred. You know, you keep growing it and it starts from 
a two dollar bill or however much you put into it. But definitely start small, you guys. Don't don't go out there and say I'm going to go buy this five hundred dollar item or whatever it may be, or I'm going to buy this or the pallets. You know, the pallet. That's the one thing that we we've actually been seeing a lot lately is people saying, "I just ordered a pallet." I sure hope I can make some money. Oh, where am I going to sell this stuff at? Don't do that. That's, I don't want to see you guys <laughs> lose your money. Um, people have actually messaged us saying, you know, what should I do now? And <laughs> it's Some of our own customers. It's, it's not a good they, situation. It's a recipe for disaster. And it's, it's, you know, I commend you for trying. Yes. But I, I would rather see you guys succeed in this business. And to succeed, you got to solve Start out small, learn the steps, work your way up. Learn the steps. Just like, I mean, you don't go to it would be like, Walmart and just walk in the door and get hired as the manager. It would be like us at the level we're at saying we're going to go buy a hotel with 300 rooms. Wow, I would what, have what, what, and we're, what, would, <laughs> what would we do with that? I mean, we'd try to open up a hotel, I guess, or we'd try to sell it or... We would have no idea. And then this money is tied up. We're stressed. We don't know what to do with it. We didn't take the steps. How about if we went and bought a duplex first? I told her not to buy the hotel, you guys. How about <laughs> if we bought a duplex first? How about if we went and bought two duplexes, three duplexes? How about if we started to buy a little community? How, you know, what if we just, we worked our way up so we understood how we were getting there? That's how we got to where we're at now. You do the steps. It is so worth it to do the steps. We have seen so many people try to jump in. People that we've known, customers of ours, people we don't even know. We have done over 3,000, probably 4,000 lockers, storage lockers, and you can always spot a new a new person coming. Oh, you always know. And you can always see when they're overpaying. You can always see when they're getting run up. Run up meaning somebody else didn't like them being there. Cards them to spend more they, money than they They spent their to. money for them. Oh, you could just sit there and watch it, and it's it's sickening in, in, in a way. It really is because you know that person is losing their money and that's not what Mike and I are about. We are not about people wanting to see them get hurt or lose, lose their money. If you've watched enough of our videos, we we truly mean it. Keep laughing. It's the medicine of life. It really is. It really is. Life gives enough throws, doesn't it? So um, we're trying to help you build those steps. Be patient. Take those steps. Yep. So um, should we tell them what we did? Yes. Oh, so what we did just for you guys, which Man, we had to drag our butts out of bed. We haven't done this in a long time. We actually got up and we went out to a few garage sales. We thought, you know what, let's go pick some merchandise. And we just hit a couple of them. And we did a little bit of video footage, which you're going to be seeing here. And uh, Terry kept track of everything that we bought. And do you want to fill them in? That was really strange trying to shoot a vid shoot video at somebody's house at their garage sales. I mean, I know there's videos on it and people do YouTube that I know that, but for us, that was a new thing. And that I, was, that uh, was very uh, new. <laughs> so we, we, we tried to stay very courteous and we did keep the camera down a lot, you know, to, towards the merchandise of the ground the best we can. And we only did it at a few places, but let's show you a clip of that. So the dollhouse for 20. And the keyboard and the stand is ten. Let's grab these Lincoln logs for three. Yeah. Nine and a half volts. I probably have one in the stand. Stand set <laughs> Tighten up some screws. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Though? She'll like it. She'll be totally excited. Right, Mario. Oh. I got that. That's a lot, our little stack foreman. Anything else right off? I don't think so. The little tunnel? Normally, I don't deal with clothes, 
that. Let's see what we got here. Just because I see some Oregon Duck gear. Okay. Well, she came in on $5 for the dollhouse. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Well, I need to do with this. How much is this? Right back. Okay. I mean, this is a risky because you never know if it has a leak. Yeah. But for $5, I'll take a chance. It's super clean. The shortage. I know, it's super clean. Okay. It's, yeah. it's, it doesn't have a wool or anything on it. It just, uh, it, I guess it just didn't have enough air to hold my fiance. <laughs> 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 You know, something like okay, this is always kind of a risky because here. you just don't know. Yeah, no, but this one might be a little bit harder here. Let's see. We know the people. They actually have a contracting company. So it's always no, know, know what you're doing here. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Find out how much that is, Mike. Okay, I'll be back. All right. I'll be back with my money. Purpose. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So five dollars, five dollars, one dollar, five dollars. Okay, so eleven, eleven dollars here. Yeah, we'll go with that. All right, let's get them paid. Is that what you want? Hey guys, okay, we're back with all of our good treasures here, and it was a short little run for garage sale, just kind of give you guys an idea here, but we paid 70 for everything, and we're going to show you really quick what we're going to sell them for. So the keyboard we're going to sell for $25, the Lincoln Logs back there we're going to sell for 10 the Best Place sign will be 8 Baby Matt will be 15 Mario will be 10 start each day sign will be five the float in the back will be 15 this candle holder is kind of rough but I thought it could be something pretty useful for around the Halloween time uh, five dollars and then the vintage Santa climber I'm not gonna do a huge markup on it, but I'm gonna put it up for 20. We picked it up, I believe, for 10, wasn't it? Um, but we're gonna put it for 20. We'll just put that over in the warehouse section because people do like vintage Christmas. And then the dollhouse, 40. So again, we paid 70 for all of this, and all of it now resell. If we get our asking price, will be 153. So for a short amount of our time. It gives you a, a little bit of an idea of a double up you could do. Okay guys, we forgot to put these two items out with everything else to show you what all we picked up for that day, but we got uh, the Coors Light sign, so that will bring us in $10. And then this trunk, I'm not quite sure yet what we'll get for this right off, but uh, you know, probably, oh, $8 roughly, $8, $10 range. I'll have to look into that, you know, kind of get an idea quicker. I haven't sold one of those for a while. So we'll get those two added into our total. Okay, so now that you got to see that clip, let me tell you in a rundown, uh, you know, we didn't pick a lot. We were probably out for maybe an hour yeah, at most. An hour, yeah, about most. And then we went to the then we went to the grocery store to get that three dollar gallon of milk we told you about. Um, <laughs> 
um, we spent a total of seventy dollars picking. How many items did we buy? I don't know how many items we bought. Three, four, five, nine. But the total, we these are items we have felt comfortable with. Now we could look at them quick enough, and we knew, as you saw in the video, we were able to how fast in our in our minds. Uh, resellers can look at stuff very fast and, and it just comes know with, with experience. It comes with experience. It does. You don't always have time to sit there and look it up and this and that because if you're wasting your time, you're missing out on other opportunities out there to make that money on. So it comes with learning, and you don't want to buy something that you can't sell or you have a hard time even getting your money back on or you yep. take a loss on which every reseller takes a loss that, through your road you you're going to take losses don't do it at the beginning that goes yeah. back to that part that i was saying is is know your products know yes. what you're going to purchase don't walk into a garage sale and go look at tools if you don't know anything about tools no. go look at the stuff that you you know you'll you should i'm assuming be automatically drawn towards things that look familiar to you or that you know about. Exactly. Those are the things that you're going to be looking for. Now there's every, and that's what we do. There's every category out there. I mean, like we were saying, there's you got categories, you got housewares, you got toys, tools, antiques, clothing, outdoor. Um, Money to be sports. made in all of those categories every, if you know what you're doing. Yes. Yeah, so, no, you know, if you're an electronic person, Go to garage sales and just look for electronics to start off with. Wherever you feel comfortable. If you feel comfortable with household and toys, go look for household and toys. Start where you're feeling comfortable with. Mike and I can go to pretty much any category and we know we could handle it. But again, it's over 20 years. We split up. We do. When we walk into a garage sale, she goes towards the housewares and, and decor. And I go towards the, the sporting goods and the tools. Because I know the prices on that stuff and the qualities. She knows this stuff. And that's just stuff that we've just learned. Trial and error, you know, all these years. For, time after time after time. For us, we're not clothing people like to deal with clothing. We don't even we, look at we, clothing. We did. We did clothing when we very first started becoming resellers. Gosh, I was probably... I don't even know how long ago, many, many years ago, back on eBay. We picked we clothes, at, pick thrift clothes stores. at the thrift stores. We would wait till the uh, you know sale day mm -hmm. when Markdown certain, day. certain color went on sale and we would go in there, we would buy bags and bags of clothes. Yes. And um, that was you know, a we sold them on job. eBay. But I I don't know much about clothes anymore. I've heard that that market's oversaturated. We don't do it. I know there's people that still make a lot of money there's in a, clothes, but yes. Um, so just know, know again, your product, where you're feeling comfortable, and how much money you put out. So how many products did we have? How many I items? believe there was nine items. Nine? Okay. Oh, um, ten. Ten, I think. Two, four, I'm six, not a very good counter. Eight, ten, actually twelve. Oh, that's 12. right, because we forgot. Twelve items, things. but we spent $70, and we've resold it all for 168 So... An hour of picking, an hour for selling, to post it and to sell it, uh, we profited $98. So $98 in a two-hour period, that's that's not bad math. No, you and know? it was very good for, very good. Was, for us, it was very easy. Um, you know, one of the items you'll see in the, you've, or you, well, you already saw in the video, was a little electronic keyboard. That thing had a wobbly stand. It was missing the power cord, but I knew that I probably had a power cord that would fit it. I knew I could tighten all the screws on the stand. Some people may have looked at that and thought, oh, that's not going to work for me. Um, for me, I was able to recognize that. And that's the kind of things that you guys will either already know or you will learn as you go. I have a, We have a buyer who I knew she would want the dollhouse. So I instantly just messaged her and I just said $40 and I knew I gave that away. But this isn't something that I wanted to deal with anymore. This was mostly just to make the video for you guys. Well, we weren't trying to get and, rich. Uh, no, we, we were trying to just flip it and move on. To move on. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes if you just want to sit on this stuff, that's okay. There, I mean, There's people out there that make a lot of money by going for that top dollar. Yes. But they have the time to wait for that item to sell for that top dollar or they have the space to store it or there's a lot of factors involved in that there is there different, is really different is. than and what those, we do those are all steps again with where you're going to feel comfortable through this process
So start off, you know, our, our recommendation again is pick stuff. Start small. Start, start small. Start small. Take your baby steps. It's okay. You want to succeed. Don't jump in the deep end yet. Um, pick some stuff around your house. F figure out first where you're going to sell, how you're going to do it. Do you feel comfortable again meeting somebody? How or not? How are you going to handle all of this? Or are you just going to go online? Pick something at your house. Pick pick 10 items, 20 items, whatever you feel comfortable with. We all have them, guys. We all I have don't them. care who you it are. It could be a stuff. $5 candle. It could be a $100 electronic, whatever, that you don't play anymore. Um, it could be a jacket that's in an excellent condition. Anything. And actually, you'll be kind of glad you got rid of some stuff in your house. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, you, you'll be like, oh, see if you liked the process. Did you like the process and the time it took? You know, that's another part. If you can handle all that, move to the next step. Go to the garage sale. Go to the 10 garage sales. If you're already garage selling or and thrift baking, stores. Maybe garage sales aren't much of an option in your area. Go to thrift stores. Yeah. You know, um, your nonprofits, your whatever they may be where you live. Yeah. Um, secondhand stores. I mean, there's a bazillion different ones out there. Now, some of you are already at this level. Some of you, um, this is what you do and you don't know how to get to the next level. Well, that video is still to come. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll figure out how to make one of those. We'll too. figure that one out. <laughs> Number, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, it's my turn. I know I uh, gave Mike the turn. I just, I just wanted to say it again. Number one thing, guys, know what things are worth. Yes. If you overprice your items, they're not going to sell and you will fail as a reseller. Definitely know where you even when you pick those five or ten items out of your own home and you're just going to sell those, look them up, figure out what a realistic price is before you try to sell it. Yes. I, I, I mean, I, I could say that a million times to you guys. That's my number one rule. It's no, yeah. You no, definitely, no, you, have, you have to because that's that's the one thing right there that will that will f make you fail in the business is not knowing what to sell. You could sell it for too cheap, and then you're not making any money, or you can price it too high and not sell it, and you're still not making any yeah. money. So yeah, if you watch, both ways. if you've watched our videos, you hear us calling out prices, and we've had many of you comment back or message back, or even our local customers that watch our YouTube videos and they do say, we hear from you guys many, many times, we are realistic. We are realistic in our prices. Well, it's it's reality. We're not trying to sugarcoat it for you. We want to be realistic that, yes, this may scan for $130. I could post it and sell it online for $120, but I'm going to lose my shipping. I'm going to lose my fees. Where am I going to add? $80? Right. I could sell that $130 item locally for $70, cut out that middleman. I can move it fast, I can be done. We do use eBay. There are times we use eBay because we know those particular items will not move in our area. That's, you gotta know. Comes back to you know knowing your items, knowing where you're gonna yes. sell it, and knowing those realistic prices. And that's, it all comes with time and trial and error, and that's why we say take your steps because you have to learn those steps. Nobody can really tell you unless they sat with you day after day after day coaching you for hours, there's no way just to do it in a in a course or a 10 minute video or even this video. The biggest advice is take those steps, feel comfortable with what you're putting out there financially. And when you feel comfortable with that item, with that time frame and with what you've done, maybe even try it just for another three weeks or a month or two months, wherever again. Push yourself to try it a little bit longer. Really feel a good comfort zone that you can just do it almost in your sleep, you know. Uh, but you do also have to be brave at the same time with it. Uh, I was just getting ready to go somewhere with that. There's Terry times. says be yeah. brave. Also, set yourself a limit of how much money you're willing to spend because the money you're willing to spend, you also have to be willing to lose. Yes. It is always a possibility that you could lose that money depending on how it all worked out. Maybe you go buy 50 bucks worth of stuff at a garage sale and you're not able to sell any of it. It's always a possibility. So you got to, you know, you got to make yourself a limit. Don't overspend and then 
all of a sudden you're freaked out and going, oh my gosh, how am I going to get all this money back? So definitely, you know, set yourself a limit and know, you know, what you want to spend. Your comfort zone. Again, your comfort zone. Comfort zone, your knowledge. Um, I remember our very first house we bought to flip. We put an offer in and like in one hour we were accepted. And we were sitting there going, our our eyes got big and we we're sitting there going, Oh my gosh, what did we just do? We're like, we, I guess we just bought another house. You know, that was a new step for us when we did that. Um, so it's, you, you, but you gotta, see, you gotta put yourself out there, but you gotta have to be brave and still know that it's not going to destroy you if it doesn't go completely your way. As long as but you, you got to be safe. As long as you put that limit out there yeah. and know how far to go with it. And yes. then eventually you'll know, okay, will that work? Maybe I can go farther. There's times we still, I mean, we still make purchases where we'll sit there and go, was that was that the right choice? Okay, we, we got the knowledge. We know how to move this. We can do this. Yep. But we still do it. We still, oh God, what did I just do? You know, we still do it. It happens. And, <laughs> We, we will bring out part two. We don't know if it'll be in a couple of weeks or a month. We want to give you some time to start getting into this. I don't want to just give you part this, part one, part two tomorrow, part three the next day. And you're sitting there going, wait, which way do I turn? Which way do I go? Hey, I'm just going to jump ahead and go to part three. Oh, crud. I just failed and lost whatever. 200, 300, 800, 1,000. What do I do with this stuff? How do I do this stuff? And you're laying on the floor crying because most resellers at some point have probably cried and have been stressed at some point also with this job. And most resellers that work hard at it and, ha and to get to the level of success, you put in a lot of hours. You do. And that again is start small. That's even working your hours into it because if you try to go from here to a 70 80 hour work week on reselling that's gonna blow your mind also right there and um, a 70 hour work week for Mike and I is almost oh. it's almost it's, every, it's almost every week yeah it's and, and that's why we take off on these these big vacations but we do it full-time so yes. this uh, is our job you know we worked our way into that we didn't used to do it like no. that we used to still have jobs and then we did resell on the side and this and that but um, so, we'll, I mean, we'll get into more of that later as, you know, as time goes on. Yes. But, um, we want to see you all succeed. Start, please start with step one. I don't care where you're at, what country you're in. I know we got people all around this world that are watching now. And so thank you for that, by the way. Yes. Thank so you. thank you. Thanks for being one of our little <laughs> subscribers too, by but the way. Start with what works in your area. Again, what works for where we live in the Northwest may not work for in Florida or may not work in China, may not work in... In wherever. Yeah, wherever. Can, I mean, there's, there, you got viewers everywhere. All over. So, you know, know how things resell in your area and the prices and what the items are. So, yep. I, What's the number one rule? Know your prices. Know, know your, your prices. retail prices. Know your prices and where you're secure at. Yeah, I knew. It. It. I said it again. But really, Feel comfortable. really, guys, start small. Start right. really start small. There, there are some resellers out there that will just tell you, yeah, take your money, go, go buy stuff, go do this. And I mean, yes, maybe they're trying to get you excited, but they're not. Um, they're not actually helping you by saying that. They're giving you false expectations. So we don't want to do that. We do not want to create the illusion of you're going to buy this and you're going to get rich. We don't want to create that. No. You know, yes, we want you to, we want you to buy. We want you to do it, but we want you to succeed. Do it the it. right way and it will work. It will work. It will work. It will work. So take those, know your limits, your comfort zone, your products, your products and, your and prices. Uh, the knowledge of it, and the steps. Take this step. You take this step now, and maybe two months or three months, you will be at this step. And then at the six-month level, you can go to another step. No, just do the steps. In a year from now, you're going to look back and go, wow, I 
went from here to here. You will get to know all the other pickers in your area. You'll know what they go for. You'll know if John over here or Chris over here or Tom over here wants what you want. So you know this ad at this garage sale says it has these items. You know your competition will be there. So you know that maybe you got to be there an hour early because it's an amazing sale that you know you've seen pictures on that yeah. you need to be there when those early people in line or you will know you will learn this by trial and error us telling you you can't fathom it until you see it and you do it and you you feel it in your hands it's hands on and if you're already past that step get ready, get ready for round two get ready for step number two yes so i Whatever really, that may i be. really hope you guys find this um helpful you know we we don't know how to express it to you enough without wishing we could just take all of you with us from steps to steps but boy wouldn't that be entertaining be crazy people <laughs> we've actually gotten a lot of messages of people asking us hey do a do a how-to video on this or do a how-to video on that and i think a lot of you guys are subscribed to us you know that we've only been doing youtube for what not even six months yet no five I, so we're i mean we're new to making videos that's we another have, step for us between the two of us we have over 40 years of experience combined we're trying to learn how to put it into a video and get it to you guys i don't know i i don't know how to write a book i don't know how to do any of that but we'll try to yeah we've actually been told that we should we should do a we, we've been approached to if i pay you we've been approached many 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 times if i pay you Will you teach me how to do I, this? I got an email two days ago from somebody saying, Yeah, he did. Do you do hands-on training? I Can I it. come to your location and learn from you? And I'm sitting there going, what? You I, know, I, I, I can't. I don't know how to do that. We will just do our best we can teaching you through these videos. So. And, uh, you know, we're not worried about, again, John, Joe, Tom, whatever, all of you all around this world, you know, it's a big world. There's a lot of merchandise We're out all there. out there doing the same thing. We you know? are. So it's not a threat. When it's a threat, it's, it's when it's in your town, when it's in your city. And do not steal anybody else's ideas. That's terrible. That's bad. You will get blackballed really quick. Don't do that. Well, let me rephrase that. It's okay to get ideas from other people. Don't copy them thank you that's what i meant to if say if their name is mike and terry's resale don't make yours john and terry's resale i mean make your own name make yeah. your own just do your own thing use your own be we've, yeah you we've that's, had we've had that issues that's who we are we are us you are you we just had to do another blocking last week of uh somebody in our actually our local town here trying to Oops. yeah <laughs> yeah it's out there it's out there again for the world so it happens it happens but you do get blackballed by uh the, your resale community so be careful that you don't step on toes out there um be kind we're all out there for the same the same thing and you you know if you make um teammates i guess with it or people with knowledge hey i might know now that again john over here wants this but he knows I want this kind of product over here. So he might be like, calls me up and says, hey, Terry, I was just at this garage sale and they have, or he might text me real quick, they might have blah, 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 or vice versa. You actually learn to work together. Um, and that has happened a lot too. We have so. many, many competitors that purchase from us. We have storage locker yeah. competitors that buy from us. Yeah. We have... Um, they bought them out of our lockers. We have liquidation <laughs> competitors that buy from us. Um, so, you and know, it's okay. don't step on toes. Be friends with everybody. Be, you know, be nice to your customers. Everybody in the world can be a customer. Yes. Even but your competitor. They can't. Then that, that's completely fine. Just don't step on those toes. Nope. So, okay, we went on right. and on. Blah, blah, so blah, 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 that's what it seems blah. like the Mike and Terry show seems to always do. So, All right, guys. you guys, I hope you, again, you found this. Give us a like if, if you know, if you found even the tiniest little bit of information in this video, Please give us a like, like on it. Tell us what you thought. This is our first Don't ever crush instructional us. <laughs> video. If this all works out, we're going to keep doing them for you. Yeah, if you don't see any more, well, 
Okay. Yeah. Right. You guys really take right. care of yourselves Definitely. and keep laughing. Definitely. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.